right? So, uh, my, uh, Bethany goes and says, build the best and strongest team you possibly can, right? So it's up to you to build the, th the, the team, right? Not killing yourself, trying to do everything yourself. You need to let go, right? So you can free up your time to look at the more excellent things, the more um, cordial thing, the more cogent things, the, the things no one really can do right but you right prioritize those things spend your 24 hours well right the things other people can do give it to them train them show them what you want them to do right so you freeze up time for you to grow it frees up times for you to look at the things that no other person but you can look at it frees up time to look at things at your level not things below your level right so letting go means taking the plunge and creating a team, hire the people to help, and then delegate to them, which is what we've been saying all, all along, right? Delegate. Look for the right people that can do the things you cannot do or the things that take most of your time but have the lowest value, right? You want to focus on the things that have the highest value. You know, prioritize your time around the things that have the highest value to you, right? Why you let other things you know, delegate the things that others can do, all right? So trusting in others takes time, talk to money, right? Because nobody can do you or do your thing like you would do it, right? Nobody can replicate you. They can only try, right? So you have to uh, then understand that, be considerate, right? Be considerate and understand and see things from pe other people's uh, high view, right? Uh, don't, don't be overly imposing, per se, right? And give time for people to grow, right? You have to come to their level and bring them to your level, right? And, and, and doing all of that requires time, you thinking about it, and money, right? For mine, I've, I've repeatedly told um my farm manager you know the things and he needs to work on and it, it, his strong points and his weak points right and I, I i try to use the strong points while i give him um grace to work on his weak points and also while he's working on his weak points i can focus to cover the gaps in on his weak points right uh so that because if i don't do that things will collapse I expect him to use his strong points while I can help him cover the gaps and the weak points while I'm giving him time to grow, right? So those are those little things you, you got to do, all right? So in so these are the eight points. So the first one on the eight points, uh, Bethany gives in a book here in chapter seven on how to uh, build this, this team around yourself uh, to help you in building your your business or your life, right? Or your life doesn't have to, your life itself is a business, right? Like I, I gave uh, those personal examples earlier on, right? So you have to establish clear goals and expectations, right? Because if you don't have clear goals and expectations, you will not know how to adjudge the, 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 the people around you, right? You will not know how to adjudge the effectiveness of your delegation. Because you have to declare about your delegation. What am I delegating? What am I trying to get out of that engagement, right? So you need to be clear as to the goals and expectations you, you're wanting of yourself and others, right? So, and people want to know their roles, right? And responsibilities. If you bring employ people and you don't give them roles and responsibilities, you're suffering them. But not suffering them, you're suffering yourself because you're paying them, right? And you're not getting the best out of them, right? Uh, you need to release your people and let them flourish because in their flourishing, you will flourish, right? But if you hold everything to your heart, you only tell, you want to be teleguiding them, do this, do that. That's dumb, right? You, you don't em employ talent only to um, treat them as if they are dull people, right? If you're, if you're employing or a talent, uh, skillful people, Adults treat them like adults, not babies, 
That is the way to get the best out of your team, right? Set clear goals, set clear expectations. Let them know what it is you're expecting, right? Because if you, if you, whatever you expect of someone is what that person will rise to. If, if you have no expectation of a person, that person will, write, will, will stay at that low expectation. If you want the best from your people, then you have a high expectation of them and they will seek to rise to that expectation, just human behavior, right? Whatever expectation you, as you have of people, they will rise to it, right? The other thing is look for hard workers who align with your mission, right? So you, 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 when you're employing, you employ the right people. You employ for, for, for the goal, the culture uh, that you're looking for, the skill set you're looking for, right? Pretty much your business is not a training ground, right? So, but there are certain instances where uh, someone does not have all that you need and you rather do it a certain set of critical skills while you give them opportunity and training to get the other ones. For instance, for our poultry, we, the people we're going to employ to, to run those poultry are people that have zero knowledge on running poultry. We will be employing them because of their personality, their attitude to work, right? Because that is more, most important for us. We will train them on how to run poultry. We will be employing them because of their attitude, right? That is what I have determined to be most important, right? So get out workers and align them with your mission. Let them become a part of your team, right? Let them become a part of your culture. Let them become a, uh, let them have, the, know and, and imbibe the value, the, the values, the belief of your organization, right? Because for as long as they're there, they are one, they need to be one with your company for, it, for them to, for there to be a proper alignment, right? Um, the other part is find the find right rule, right, right, find the right rules for your people, right? So you need to align people right, put them where they fit, uh, put them where they fit with their skill set, you know, that, that helps. Uh, as long as they have the right, the 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 the, the what is like we said for the poultry workers, right? It, it they had working, they have the right attitude, uh and we're going to train them on the other part, right? But but you need to uh, rightly place those working for you, right? And those you also engage, right? When I engage people, I engage them based on the their skill set, their talent, their connection. I'm not going to call someone who cannot do something. When I call you, it's because I know that you can do what I'm calling you for because I have seen it, I have experienced it, and I know you as being um, a, 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 a champion in that field. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't call people who are not champions in their fields because I'm, I'm result-oriented. When I call you, it's because I know you can get me the results I'm looking for, right? So we need to rightly align that. Don't, don't just call people for things you're not sure or you, you're forcing them to go off their lane to do it. It'll be a drag for them. It'll be a drag for you, right? So enco encourage complete honesty and transparency, mm -hmm. you know? So if your people are not honest, just like we'll say about our children, if they're not honest, it's because of the, what we, the way we train them. We told them that honesty is not a value, you right? So if, you're, if people are working for you, you need to let them understand that honesty and transparency is a high currency for you, right? If they are transparent and honest with you and you punish them, what you're telling them effectively is that that is not a value for you, right? So you, it's not what you say, it's what you do, right? If you, if you, it's the way you relate with them, they do, they, you know, when you're putting a culture into an organization, the culture is coming from the top, down right people in the organization will imbibe the culture they see of the leader not what the leader is saying 
Just like our children. Our children don't hear what we say. They reflect what we do. Same thing with an organization. You are like, like the father, parent of the organization. Every worker coming there is looking at you. Right? They're going to test it. The culture is tested from the bottom. But then is it is um, exemplified from the top. Right? So show them that honesty and transparency is a value for you. And you will get, you get a reward for it. All right? Also, see the big picture, right? Uh, so, again, you all you're trying to do is making sure there's a perfect harmony in the company, right? There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a right matching of skill sets, of, of talents, uh, you know, such that you have an harmonious flow, right? Because when that is not present, then there's no harmonious flow, right? Big reason why I sat my first farm manager, right? Uh, I guess she was just used to pifering, right? And was creating an unconducive atmosphere between her and the next person. So as a cover her tracks, right? I mean, it was just someone was used to pifering and saw me as a money bag that she, she can make all her money from. I uh, had no bearing and no love for the work. It was just seeing how much money she could make for it, you know. So I had to let her go, right? So, yeah. And that we'll see at the last point, right? You need to let people go when they don't fit into your, into, into your organization, right? Make sure everyone is doing their job and sticking to their knitting, right? So you don't want someone who just can come and just... And God, we want people that are able to contribute their own little bit, you know, to the organization because you're paying them. It's not a charity, right? It's not a charity organization. They get paid to do their job and they need to be doing it. If you have someone who is not doing their job and you don't act, you will be t telling all others that's a culture you want in your organization and that 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 uh cancer will spread so if you see a cancer someone who doesn't fit into the organization someone that was not pulling their own weight let them go same way we let a letter of my first my first time manager let them go because if we don't let them go every other person will will get the message that that is what you want and that cancer will spread right you have to be decisive right and you have to be constructive also with guidance and areas of improvement. And I've had to do a lot of this with my farm manager. You know, uh, you know, when I see lapses, I don't necessarily just quickly get on it, right? I, I allow grace and I don't just jump on him. I, I look for the right time to um, talk to him about the issues because I want him to understand where it's coming from. It's not coming from... Um, a, a, me despising him or castigating him or because I want him to get better. I mean, he's not here today, but if he was here, it will tell you I treat him as family, even though he gets paid for what he's doing. It's not charity. Right? I see him as part of my family, you know? So, oh, uh, so it, it's, it's, been a, it's been a mutually benefiting relationship, right? So don't be afraid to cut someone loose. Like I said earlier on, if someone does not fit the billing, is not fitting the culture, don't waste time on letting them go because that cancer will spread if you don't cut it off, right? So that's important. All right, that's where I'm going to stop today as the first bite here into the first part of uh, chapter seven here. The next uh, subtopic I see here is manage to manage. And we'll, we'll, we'll keen into that next week when we come back on this.